time to start developing your first website, a digital portfolio. That might not sound very exciting until you consider the fact that most websites online are technically portfolios, especially ones made to showcase specific products or people. The Hershey Chocolate website, the Britney Spears website, and the FBI website are all portfolios, offering visitors information about their products, their history, and their contact information. What we're going to do today is no different, except that this site is going to be about you. The first step is to know what your website is going to be about. In our example, we're making a portfolio for your various hypothetical multimedia projects. Photos, movies, animation, your resume, everything a teacher or possible employer might want to know about you. So how are we going to organize all of that stuff? That's a question our site map will answer. A site map is a simple document that shows the different pages of your site and how they relate to each other. First, we're going to need a home page that tells visitors about you. We might include a photo, as well as any personal facts that a visitor might enjoy knowing or find important. The point of this site is going to be to let people get to know you and your capabilities. Next, we'll need a subpage to feature your various projects. Let's say that you've made a few short films for the internet. We should make a movies subpage to showcase them. Then, maybe a resume subpage focusing on your multimedia experience and technical skills. Your next subpage could feature some photos we've taken. And you might also want to make some sub subpages to showcase your favorite photos in a series of album pages. So now your site map is pretty much done. Let's now set up our site outline, which takes our site map and establishes the file structure we'll use to keep things organized. First, let's create a list of each file included in our site, then decide how we're going to name each file. Doing this now means that later, when we're setting up our links, nothing will get confused. The simplest thing to do when naming files is to use single words and all lowercase, followed by dot HTML. So our home page will be index dot HTML. Index is usually the name given to the default page your web browser loads when it goes to a URL. Our subpages we'll call movies.html, photos.html, and resume.html. For our photo sub subpages, let's get a little fancier. First, let's put them in a separate folder called a subdirectory. A subdirectory is a folder within a folder. You can use it to organize your files offline and online. We'll call this subdirectory albums. Let's label your sub subpages with both the fact that they're photos and the name of the specific photo project. So, for example, the sub subpage that focuses on the photos you took of your cousin could be named photos underscore cousin dot html. Note that we don't use any spaces or capital letters when we name our pages. This is because some browsers and file transfer programs won't recognize spaces or capital letters as being valid parts of a URL, 
which may lead to broken links. Remember, these file names aren't just for our purposes. They're also the file names a web browser will ultimately be reading off of our site. In our site outline, we should also note the other subdirectories we'll be using to store additional multimedia. First, we'll need a folder for our images. Next, we'll need a folder for our videos. By organizing our files by file type, we'll be able to keep better track of where everything is. Now that we know about each page we'll be creating for our site, we can sketch out the layout of each page. This is called the site template, and it will create a standard look and feel for each page of our website. We could use Word, PowerPoint, or Photoshop to create this template, but let's just use a pen and paper for right now. To begin our template design, we need to figure out our header. This is the text and images a site visitor will see at the top of the page. The header is extremely important to the site because it will help establish site unity, provide an introduction for the site visitor, and offer some visual flash. Our header can also contain links to important information, like help, that we want to keep separate from our main navigation. Let's deal with text first. What is your portfolio site about? That's right, you. So the header should include your name as a headline. A headline refers to the display size text that summarizes the message of your site. Once you've created the headline, you should also come up with a subheadline of some sort that describes what kind of work the portfolio will feature. If we take a lot of pictures, we might use just photographer as our subheadline. But for this website, we're focusing on someone with many interests, so master of multimedia feels pretty accurate. The image we need for the header to accompany the headline is what we refer to as an icon. An icon is a graphical representation of an idea or concept and is used to identify this website. Icons vary in complexity and style, but since this website is about you, a simple idea for an icon might be a picture of yourself. On the other hand, putting your picture and personal information on a website might not be something you want to do if you're concerned about online safety. So if using your photo makes you uncomfortable, you could use an image that you think best expresses who you are, like a picture of a foot kicking a soccer ball or a hand writing text on a page. Once we've set up the header, let's move on to the navigation bar. As you remember, the navigation bar is an index that visitors will use to move throughout the site. So basically, it should be a list of links to all the main pages of the site. This should be pretty simple. Use our site outline as the basis. For example, we'll link to our home page, our movies subpage, our photos subpage, and our resume subpage as well as a final link to contact information. The nature of the footer of our page depends on what information you want to include there. It will also mark the end of a longer page. For our example, we'll include a notice saying that everything on the site is the copyright of the creator. Then, in our second line, we'll list your contact email for the site visitors. Think of the footer as the last thing you say to the visitor. So, 
you should use it to remind them who you are and what your site is about. So, now we know about each page we'll need for our website, thanks to our site map and our site outline. And we know how each page will look, thanks to our site template. Great! All the hard stuff is done. Now it's time for the fun stuff, making it all happen.